Cooks the food anyway. Well, I'm doing doing a little editing here, so I'll be in competition with a very very <laughs> busy game. Yes, you will. Um, Loretta cooks the what food are we anyway. Doing here, guys? Die. Killing zombies. Killing zombies. Yes. yes. We are trying. We are not uh, yet succeeding. Good <laughs> skill. So who who's ahead? The zombies are ahead right yes. now. Yes. Oh, good gracious. <laughs> So what's the what's going to happen? Okay, I don't know. I'm trying to host. Well, uh, Loretta cooks the food anyway. Since I'm doing Dr. some Loretta, editing, I just dive, wanted to say dive. that uh, on a result of five or higher, the bus the is coming is along. Good, and every video, I'll try to include a little bit about the bus it. and uh, also a little bit about not uh, any worse than usual. Nothing happens. My dogs are raised standard foods. Also a little about my chickens. So um. I'm enjoying it already. She swears angrily and throws the cans out. Remove. Thanks for watching my videos. Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to attempt to um, show you a little bit of the what I did to raise the bus today. I lost a lot of my footage during that time, so um, I will just be uh, kind of reenacting it and showing you exactly um, how I did that. Uh, there's a uh, there's a gentleman, I believe his website is called Transcendence Living. He's doing a bus conversion. And many of my ideas I got from him, I'll post his uh, his website. Um, but it's, they helped me uh, tremendously to have the courage to be able to start this process. But right now I'll go inside the bus here and uh, show you exactly exactly what we did. Um, if you look at his website, you'll see uh, that I uh, designed my lift uh, the same way. Now, if you see, they have a, right here is a, uh, a uh, hat channel. It's what the bus is originally made with, is with a hat channel. And I cut that hat channel all the way around once I had my stabilizers uh, welded on. And I'll show you how those work. And then I couldn't find the inch and I believe it's inch and three sixteenths um, that I needed to go into the hat channel. Uh, the only way you could do it was uh, there was a hammered uh, for decorative metal, but it was very expensive. A hammered um, uh, tubing that I could use. So what I used instead is I used an uh, inch and a quarter. 11 gauge and I just ground slightly all you need to take off is a 16th so I ground slightly on each side of this uh, and then it just slipped right into the hat channel and then when I put my uh, my vise on that it straightened this all up real nicely so um, I was very pleased with the turnout it was not hard to do and the raising of the bus was very simple I simply used all thread, 7 8 inch all thread, and uh, I will have to find it for you, but I used 7 8 inch all thread, and maybe I could find a picture. The two nuts would go in between here, and then um, I welded these onto uh, the hat channel, two in front, two in back. So uh, let me see, right here is where I welded it. Uh, you can see the grinding there. I welded one above, I mean one below like this, and then I welded one above like this. And the all thread, a uh, 7 8 inch all thread was between that. I just simply screwed the nuts apart and lifted the bus with those four pieces of all thread. Easy process. Now as soon as I uh, had the all threads welded on and cut my hat channel all the way around, just basically in the middle, uh, then uh, the next step was to um, uh, start raising it. As soon as I got it raised to what I wanted, which was 20, uh, 21 and a half inches, because that made my metal fit perfectly uh, from, from the uh, bottom of this rivet down to below the rub bar. Um, it fit perfectly in there that way and uh, so as soon as I got it raised and measured it all the way around then I immediately went ahead and put in 
four of these. Um, next to where I had the uh, uh, the the uh, all thread, I put four of these one by uh, uh, one inch and a quarter tubings in and welded them in place immediately. Squeezed them and it straightened my bus up, really stabilized it, and uh, everything went really smoothly. You have to excuse me, I had a tooth extracted today. Dealing with a little pain, but a life is still a joy, ain't it great? <laughs> well, good morning. Uh, this morning I'm going to talk to you about uh, what uh, what you need to do really to uh, prep your bus and get ready and to lift the roof. And I'm going to show you how I lifted the roof. So um, uh, hopefully this video will be helpful to you. But uh, there are some other great um, sites out there. In fact, I got my idea uh, for the stabilization part uh, from uh, Transcendence. He actually raised his bus using this for stabilization and this is exactly what I did. So you can always go look at his website and get a little uh, better clarification um, if you like. Uh, but what we're going to look at this morning is uh, um, <clears throat> exactly how uh, we raise the bus and exactly how we stabilized it uh, while we were doing the actual raise. Now my bus is a pusher bus. That means that the engine is in the back. And so as a result, I had to do things a little bit different than, uh, uh, than some of the people you see. Uh, right here, if you'll take a look, this is my breather in the back for the motor. And um, the easiest thing for me is I cut up and around I cut up and around and left the uh, the vent in place uh, for my breather. So uh, you can see that the up here you can see that I cut this particular one when I cut it with the sawzall. I cut it at a higher position so I wouldn't be in the way of this. And uh, so again, I used inch and a quarter. Um, because I couldn't find the inch and three sixteenths only in the hammered uh, square tubing, and I wanted eleven gauge. So uh, what I ended up doing here is this is a, I ground down the two sides. Didn't take very long, but I ground down the two sides of the inch and a quarter, uh, top and bottom, so that they would slide into the hat channel without a problem. Uh, then I just clamped them with welding clamps so that it straightened the bus up. And uh, actually put everything back in the place that it should be when I when I force that uh, uh, inch and three sixteenths pipe into uh, the hat channel, man, it just made everything fit perfectly. And then I welded a piece of angle on the side of each um, of each inch and three sixteenths uh, square tubing that I welded in. I put in this uh, this piece of angle. And I, I will put rivets through that, and um, I put it on with a 3M, I'll give you the number later, but I put it in with a 3M uh, construction double-sided sticky tape, so that when I lifted the steel up, um, I actually had a place to attach it without putting any rivets in. Then I was able to put the rivets in. Uh, now I'm going to show you... Um, uh, the area that I had the most difficulty with was cutting uh, right through these areas um, from uh, from the side around to the back window. And uh, it's because there's so many layers and pieces of metal and I was just cutting it with my sawzall. Uh, but I actually uh, am very pleased with the way it turned out. After I cut it and raised it, I took a piece of cardboard and laid flatways right here and I marked. Then I went to a sheet metal shop and uh, at the sheet metal shop what they did is they bent it to fit the piece of uh, cardboard and this is a piece of 16 gauge and I made it a little taller than what it, it needed to be and um, uh, so it's riveted in and put in with Sikaflex and at the top and the bottom and then I will also do a little body work when I get ready to uh, sand but not much will be needed but this shows you the sides and that's just a cover for because it's so cold right now that's a cover covering my vent for uh, for my intake and then this is the other side and the bins turned out really well and so um, I'm pleased with it for what 
for what we're going to do, uh, it's going to be it's going to be a great thing. So I just have a more rivets to put in, but other than just putting some rivets in, uh, we're totally enclosed. It's totally weatherproof now, and so I'm able to work inside and to heat it without a problem. And now before I raised my bus, I went ahead and uh, uh, took all the bottom row of rivets out because it was easy to reach at that point. But you can see I took the bottom row of rivets. Now I put some back in there. I put like four on each, in between each deal. I'm going to put one in every single hole. A quarter inch rivet is what I'm putting back in. Aluminum rivets. That's what holds up my steel. This is 16 gauge, 4 by 10 uh, sheet metal uh, that I put in there. And so when you push it up against the bottom of these rivets, then you can lock it in by pushing it to the double sticky tape that's on all of these. But what you do need to do is you need to leave it off on the top uh, five or six inches so that you have enough space up there to slide it. So you can put the top of your metal against that and two people can do it easily. Top of the metal against this and push it up. Now I went through with a pry bar and separated my outside metal uh, where I'd taken out the rivets from the inside so that there was plenty of, ro of room for me to push it up. Then as soon as I got it pushed up in there um, and we pushed it against the tape, the tape held it in place and uh, I was able to go ahead and put a few rivets in each one as we worked so that uh, it wouldn't fall down or anything. And uh, so it worked out really good and these will all be riveted uh, down each one of these. Now I don't know how it'll be for you, but for me uh, it was um, a huge relief once I got the bus lifted and stabilized. And uh, right after I lifted it, I just went ahead and put in four uh, of the uh, inch and three sixteenths, uh, the, the inch and a quarter that I'd ground down a little bit, uh, four of those pieces in. And uh, I ran them past uh, the top uh, about more like about 10 inches I guess on each side. So um, uh, I've got three real good wells on both sides um, and then uh, the actual angle uh, that we're using right here uh, this angle you can see one two three four five I have five two inch wells on that so it's not going to go any place and uh, I love the use of the tape uh, but the first one I put up by myself, whoops, I'm sorry, I put it up by myself. The wind was blowing very, very strong, gusting up to like 40 miles an hour. But you know, I always think I can do anything by myself. So I set up saw horses, piece of plywood, two before's, all that. So I had a little scaffolding, set my metal up on there. It only weighs a hundred and, I believe it's 120 pounds or 110 pounds per sheet. And uh, the problem that I started with, which hopefully you don't do this same thing, is I did put my tape all the way to the top. Well, when I tried to lift it by myself and stab it in between the metal at the top of the bus, it stuck to the tape. And I'm telling you, it's hard to get loose. So I finally got it loose, realigned my tape, picked it up again, and I did the same thing again. <laughs> so... Uh, by the time I was finished with one sheet, I was totally uh, worn out. So what I did instead is we, on all the rest of it, I left it, I left it down about six inches, the double sticky tape, the 3M tape, left it down about six inches so that when I picked up the metal, and uh, also I had my son-in-law help me. The next day I was so tired, I had my son-in-law come and help me and uh, to put all the rest of them on. And really all, all I needed from him was just to lift it and stick it to the tape. And that's basically, uh, and that basically had it. But by leaving it down about six inches, it made it really easy for us to lift it up and get that top edge against that and push it right up into where it was supposed to be. So no more problems once I left that double sticky tape down about six inches and just started it there and then went on down to the bottom. So uh, there's a lot of things that double sticky tape does. One is it decreases vibration or sound noise. Um, it also it's so very, very strong. It actually acts like... Uh, it, it works as good as the rivets do. So I'm putting a lot less rivets than I would have put if I hadn't put that double sticky tape on. So I'm really sold on it. Uh, it's really good stuff. Okay, and cutting the tape, I mean the, uh, uh, the roof, 
uh, you can see about where I cut it. You can you can look right there's where I cut it, top and bottom. And um, uh, but after it was cut, of course, this part of the roof was sticking straight out, and this part of the roof was sticking straight in this direction. So for me, it was easiest just to go ahead and frame in my window. Now I got a, a window, a back window from a Cherokee uh, a Wagoneer 95 model, I believe. I just wanted to know what it was so if I ever had a problem with the window, I could find a replacement for it. So uh, that's what mine is. Mine is a 95 uh, Jeep Cherokee window. And uh, I just cut off everything I didn't need and just put the frame itself in there and uh, welded in a frame around that of the inch and a quarter tubing. And uh, then this will, this was very easy to enclose for me. What I did, and I'm still not finished with it, but I just bent everything down so it was kind of pointed in the right direction. And then I took the extra roof metal. If you look right here and you see on the roof it has these holes in it, this metal does. Well, I took the extra roof metal and I covered that, uh, all this portion with that extra roof metal, and then I fiberglassed it. So right now I've got two coats of fiberglass. It's totally sealed. We don't have to worry about any leaks or anything. I will put additional fiberglass when I get ready to do the bodywork on this front portion, smooth it out, and make it look uh, uh, perf a little more professional. Uh, also, inside my bus, since I already have the skins on inside my bus, um, after I pull all my electrical and get all my plumbing in, uh, then what I will do is I'm going to take it to a location where they're shooting house, and I'm going to have a foam shot. This will have one by fours, and you'll see that in the future. You'll see that this will have one by four stripped on the whole thing, and then behind that we'll shoot uh, foam. Uh, I'm going to use closed cell foam, even though it's more expensive, because it has about an R rating of about seven per inch. So that will give me uh, good insulation by the time. Um, by the time we add three quarters of an inch to this, you're looking at uh, right at three inches of foam. So that'll be like an R21 on the sides of my bus. So um, it's coming along and uh, uh, things are happening. Hopefully I can share this with you in case you decide you want to do this. Uh, by the way, I bought this bus. It has 180,000 miles on it. It has one of the best Cummins engines that you can buy. It doesn't smoke at all. And I bought this bus on Craigslist for uh, $8,700. Um, it's a 2000 model. And uh, so it's, uh, it's got a lot of things on it that I like. It has automatic chains. It has a retarder, um, which uh, helps with your braking, etc. And uh, the only thing that I really have to do is I do have to replace uh, uh, the two front windows. They have lots of chips and uh, lots a uh, crack, a big crack in one of them. So um, actually, um, I'm very pleased with it, very happy with it. I'm going to put um, about six windows down each side. I'm going to use the original windows that came out of the bus, and uh, they're tinted and look good. They'll, I'll raise them, though, so that we they'll be eye level in here, and you'll see the progress as we go along. Okay, well, some of you have heard me say that I raise dogs, and I do. I have standard poodles, and uh, I love them. I've got lots of dogs, and they're just really, really wonderful dogs. And it's winter time right now. They all got their winter coats on, but uh, yeah, they're they're a lot of fun. And these are these are my girls, and here are my boys. Hello guys, how you doing? Yeah. Oh yeah, they are they're just the smartest dogs. Here's some puppies that I have right now. So these come and go pretty quick. Um, I've got some that are a little older. I have people that request older dogs all the time. So I have some here that are almost a year old, two boys. And then all the rest of these are about between four and five months old. And uh, they're just great dogs. I'm very proud to sell these dogs to people because um, I know they're getting uh, quality animals. Uh, very healthy dogs. Okay, for me, this is all uh, new. Uh, I like learning though, but it's a lot of new stuff for me. 
uh, vlogging, uh, building the bus, um, but the raising the dogs and fish and chickens and goats and all that, that's, um, that's familiar stuff. But anyway, right now what I'm vlogging about mainly is the bus. But you may see my chickens or my dogs occasionally on here. Uh, and my garden when I start it, because I have a greenhouse that I'll be raising some uh, plants in. And so I'll be putting those out to garden. But anyway, uh, I'm sure glad you're along for the ride. This has already been fun.